Hey friends, you love Logic Apps, I love Logic Apps, but I also love having full control over my environments and all the security that it brings. Integration service environments are an offering for hosting your Logic Apps with stuff like dedicated compute, private static outbound IP addresses, and all that good stuff. Kevin is here to show us how they work today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and it's another episode of Azure Friday. I'm here with Kevin Lamb. We're going to talk about integration service environments. How are you, sir? I am great. How are you doing? I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I like learning about new things. I've been doing some Logic Apps, and now you've come with some new stuff that's going to make my Logic Apps even better. Yeah, so uh, Logic Apps is our serverless offering, mm -hmm. allowing you to build workflows up in the cloud that do integration, not only in the cloud, but on-prem. Mm -hmm. And so one of the great things about Logic Apps is that it's serverless, and so that provides a lot of things like micro-billing and the ability to, for you not to have to worry about uh, the infrastructure and, and how it gets scaled out in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Uh, it also gave you the ability to talk to entities on-prem, but you needed to install something called the on-premises data gateway, mm -hmm. which was a, a reverse proxy using Relay as the backbone for, for that communication, and that was very convenient for some folks, but um, you know, guys who have uh, express routes or have you know, tight security uh, constraints in their network where they want to punch holes into their firewall going back out, uh, it freaks some of the security guys out. They say, hey, you know, how can I get my logic apps to talk to my very important private on-prem entities, mm -hmm. and I've invested in this express route, how can I take advantage of those two things? I see, so you really, what you want is us to be all in the same subnet or have a clear route between each other, if not in the same subnet, darn near close. In the same VNet. In the same VNet, pardon That's me. Right. Uh, and a reverse proxy isn't the most elegant or secure way to do that. Right, because then you have to install a machine inside of your uh, data center, your on-premises, to then connect back. And people don't want to have to, it's like, I'm going to the cloud. Why do I want more machines? Right, so if I, so I want the power of Logic Apps in my own personal space yep. that can talk to all of my on-prem stuff. Yes, and sometimes some financial institutions or hospitals or other more paranoid types of customers want to make sure that their Logic Apps are running in their own environment and have their own private storage. And so we've, cam we've come up with an integration service environment to host your Logic Apps running inside of your VNet, all for yourself. Now, I've used app services. It's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. I like app service environments, and I recommend that to customers who, as you say, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. Right. You <laughs> want your own space. You yeah. want to know that there's no noisy neighbors or any issues like that. Even though it's not really a problem with Azure, you want dedicated hardware. So this mm -hmm. dedicates space for your Logic App. That's right. So you can have that dedicated uh, CPUs and uh, storage just for you, and you have to worry about nobody else you know, being right next door to you. Very cool. Yeah. So you got, a, you got a little demo for me? Yeah, well, um, first I was going to just go through one or two slides so we Please. can get a conceptual overview of what it is. Mm -hmm. So we talked about that VNet connect connectivity where we inject uh, these components into your VNet, so then you have direct line of sight to the components that you're talking to, oh. but your SAP system, your VM. Uh, also, because you're in that VNet, you get to talk to other Azure entities that are participating in that VNet. Okay. So Azure now offers uh, capabilities for Blob and Cosmos DB, for example, to have service endpoints. And so you can lock down your, your, your traditional PaaS services, but now into a VNet. Mm -hmm. And so now we can communicate with all those through the VNet's connectivity in an in a, uh, integration service environment. Uh, we also talked about the uh, dedicated compute and isolated storage. But you know, with this, now you can have more control over your, your endpoints. So you can lock that down. You can have uh, private static outbound IP. So then if you want to do even more constraints within your VNet, we give you more of that control. And the other thing is that, you know, on one hand, it's great that serverless gives you the ability to have micro-billing and you only pay for what you consume. Uh, and so that allows you to, you know, deal with the, the peaks and valleys. But some customers really like that predictable pricing. Just tell me what it's going to cost. At the end of the year, I know exactly what I'm, I'm going to get charged for that, and I can go party on that and not have to worry about, oh, I, you know, used a lot of logic apps today, and it's going to cost me, you know, this much this month, but, you know, something less next month. Right. So for some customers, that burstable costing is a great thing, but other yep. people just want to rent a parking spot and know that it's always there and available for whoever they exactly. want to park there. And so, you know, as we think about our, our logic apps offering, we have the the PaaS service, which runs your, your logic apps, and, and you know, we have these things called connectors, which abstract all the uh, different services you need to talk to Salesforce or your SAP system or an FTP server. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we've done is we've taken the runtime portions and put that into the, uh, the ICE, which is the integration service environment, and that's what gets injected into your uh, VNet, which then has access to your entities on-prem. Interesting. Uh, and then, you know, what do you get with that integration service environment? 
uh, with that, that initial stamp, you'll get 75 million execu action executions per month. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want, you can scale that up for an additional 50 uh, million executions per kind of scale unit that you can go ahead That's and auto scale. It's a huge amount. It's, it's monstrous. And there, are, we have some customers doing quite a bit of workload uh, on Logic Apps in our PaaS offering. So it's not that uh, crazy to mm -hmm. think about hundreds of millions of, of transactions running through that thing. That's amazing. If I, I, I for, for the kinds of things that I'm doing that might mm. be overkill, but it sounds like it can scale effectively infinitely to any workload. It feels that way, yes, yeah. and, and, and we'll scale out. So even if that's not enough, we can continue to add scale units to that, to that workload. Mm -hmm. And then you also get an enterprise uh, connector, so if you want to talk to SAP or MQ series, uh, that's included into that environment, so you don't get any extra cost for that, as well as a standard integration account, which allows you to do B2B processing. So if you're doing X12, Edifact, AS2 or XML mapping with XSLT or liquid maps that gets included as well. Are the, forgive my ignorance, but are the customers like the kind of biz talky type people, the people who are going to be most interested in that? Because a lot of the things, yep. the connectors that you described, I think of as being those kinds of customers. As you think about the classic integration scenarios, mm -hmm. biz talk customers are the canonical uh, professional integrators and they would, they would utilize a lot of those features. But now we're seeing the democratization of integration. Mm -hmm. And so now we're seeing ad hoc integrators. So a normal developer says, hey, I want to connect to some system, but I don't want to have to read all the docs about the APIs and understand the off model and the shape of the message. Mm -hmm. So I can use a logic app to go create that and then have that connectivity taken care of for me and then continue and write the code that I really yeah. care about, not all that goop that just well, talks to some When service. you say that, I feel seen <laughs> because that's kind of exactly what we want to do, right? Yeah. Like we don't want to necessarily have an entire dedicated team. We want to be all full stack developers and being yeah. able to do something like this is super powerful. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it out. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an integration service environment. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually to create that. So I go mm -hmm. ahead and pick an integration service environment, and I click Create, and it's going to ask you some questions. And these are very typical questions as you go through creating any Azure resource. Mm -hmm. uh, first, it's going to ask you for a subscription, and then a resource group. And it's gone. And I'm going to put it into this uh, Clam Ice demo, and then it's going to ask me for a name. And, uh, and then a location. I'll put in US, US2. And then here you can, you can decide to have additional capacity. There's a base unit, and you want to start it right off with a couple additional units. You can do that later if you want as well. Mm -hmm. And then you have to select the VNet that you want to inject it into. Uh, so here I'm going to pick this demo ICE VNet. And so now this is the VNet that we're going to take our runtime and inject our logic app into. And then you're going to have to specify four subnets. Those subnets have to have uh, each has to have 32 IP addresses, uh, and then so it's just slash 27. Uh, and I already created some of these subnets. Mm -hmm. Oops. And then that's it. So I can go ahead and create. I click that. It checks to make sure that everything looks okay as I go create that. Mm -hmm. And, and then this it looks take okay. Too long to happen? No. Well, at least this part doesn't take very long. So this took about two minutes to, to go create, but now this will go ahead and bake. And this will take about an hour and a half to go ahead and create all the, the entities that, that are needed and inject that into your VNet. Because you really are getting your own personal space. Like to, not to push the analogy too much, but when we use the analogy of app service environments, you can make an app service in a minute or two to make an app service environment. We are dedicating space, hardware effectively right. to you. So you're really getting your own personal space and it might take a bit. And what you'll see is that uh, What's that acting as is almost as if one of our data centers is running just for you. Yeah. So it's like conjuring up a whole new platform just to run your logic apps. Yeah. So it's not you know just some VM that's sitting in the back there. Yeah. So while that's cooking, I already created one. So let's go ahead and look at the one that I already created. So we don't want to wait you know an hour and a half. Cool. And uh, so this is what what it looks like when you first open it up. And what you'll see uh, in your start screen is that we'll tell you how much uh, workload that you're doing. And there's a couple components. Uh, if you notice from, from my architecture slide from before, there were kind of two pieces of the runtime. One is the Logic Apps Engine runtime, and the other part was the connector runtime. And so you can see the, the utilization of, of CPU and memory you know, across the number of nodes that we created, so we abstracted the CPUs. Mm -hmm. uh, so then as you, you know, start using more workload, you can go ahead and scale that up if you want. Uh, and then what you'll notice on the left-hand side is that uh, we will also list all the entities that you can load into that. Logic Apps, integration accounts, connections to your connectors. You can create custom connectors that all run in this environment. Okay, here you see uh, all the logic apps that we have uh, posted to this uh, integration service environment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new 
uh, a logic app so you can see what, what that experience is like. So once I create that new logic app, I simply go to integration and logic app. The, the only thing you need to understand to be able to say, hey, how do I get this logic app to run in that ICE? Mm -hmm. right, so I'll give it a name, uh, test file copy, and uh, I will put it into an existing resource group. There you go. And uh, what you'll see here is in the, these are your typical data center locations, mm -hmm. but at the very top of the list, there's a list of integration service environments. So instead of putting it into a data center, you put it into your integration service environment that you created. Which is interesting because when you when you kind of gave that analogy, if it's almost like we're making our own data center for you, I said, right. oh wow, he must be overstating it a little bit. But then here you are in the list of locations, almost as if you have your own data center because you really have your own personal space. That's right, it's all yours and it's 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 cooking your, your logic apps that's going to run. So mm -hmm. very quickly, it's going to go ahead and create that logic app. And now that logic app will be running in that environment. So what you'll see when I create that logic app, is that uh, we'll have an attribute up here that's letting you know. Mm -hmm. And this isn't logic app light. This is logic app. This is just logic app. The apps. ones I already exactly, know how to use. Exactly how it runs in the, in the serverless offering. It runs in the same way in this environment. Awesome. So you'll see this attribute for integration service environment and it's pointing at that ice that uh, we had created. So when I go ahead and create uh, a logic app, one of the things that you'll notice is that we have a special set of connectors that run inside of that ice. Mm -hmm. And so that will allow you to connect to your entities that are on-prem. So I already have in that VNet a couple of VMs that are running, and those VMs, uh, one VM I have an SFTP server, and then also I have a blob storage that has a service endpoint that is uh, connected to that VNet as well. Mm -hmm. So now I can start connecting those two things together. So before, I couldn't access that, that by design, that blob, because it was uh, closing that VNet. So I'm going to go ahead and add a step. And what you'll see is that as I go ahead and uh, look at, at my connectors, there will be this little tag called ice. And that's letting you know that that's an ice connector and that's running inside of that environment. Mm -hmm. And now I can see any of those entities that's inside that VNet. And it's, it's just very natural there because they're in the same VNet. I use the word subnet because I don't know a lot about networking. Uh -huh. But they are networking route accessible within exactly. that, that ad address space. That yes, and if, if you have multiple VNets on your on-premises, then you can create routes across those VNets and gateways and bridges and those things that can communicate across those as well. Fantastic. Software-defined networking is absolutely revolutionary. It makes these things possible. It's, it used to be really hard. Now it's super easy. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things we can go do is now look at our logic apps. I'm going to go ahead and list the blobs in this, uh, what was before an inaccessible um, storage. Right here. This is a private, private to this VNet storage. Yep. And uh, what you'll see then is that once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is going to list all the blobs. Now for every blob, I want to move that into an SFTP server. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, banks and other corporations that have their private SFTP servers that communicate intra-bank intra communication. So yes, I have a blob and I want to make sure that those files get, get pushed around. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy those those files. It's so amazing that I could talk to a mainframe or an, a an AS400. I did banking, retail online banking 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and the amount of work that was required to do the kinds of things that you're describing would take weeks or months of work. Months. Yeah. And now you can prototype it in a weekend and lock it yep. down in a week. And uh, you know we have all those old classic connectors as well as you're talking to uh, you know DB2 systems and AS2 and uh, AS4. Uh, the amount uh, of custom C++ code that I did to try uh, to solve these problems. It's fantastic. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. In my old days, I had to write a DEC VLAN uh, abstraction layer to communicate to a Windows NT 3.51 machine. So. Ah, good times. <laughs> good times. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, create file. And then Logic Apps is smart enough. It's one of the things it has is the intelligence to say, oh, I saw that you had a collection of, of blobs. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into a for each for you. So it's kind of doing predictive programming. 
we, we continue to, one of the things we did do besides you know, things like this is we added uh, artificial intelligence into the connector picker. So based on the previous actions that you have, it predicts which action you probably want to do next. And uh, we let this go, we save it. And then we can run it. Okay. And so, uh, you know, just in, in a few minutes, we're able to go, you know, uh, once we have our ice created, it'll take a little while to get that created, but mm -hmm. create a logic app that goes ahead and reads from a uh, service endpoint on a, on a blob store, takes that file, and then pushes it out to an SFTP server. All done in a private space. All done in a private space. Only you are working on that, and uh, nobody else gets to see that. Fantastic. So if I understand logic apps now, and I'm doing logic app work, I can go and explore this option that's available to me now mm -hmm. and check it out. Uh, and I can mix and match and use these things however my VNets are set up, however my environment is uh, Correct. Needed. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Well, I am learning all about uh, integration services environments here on Azure Friday. Thank you.